Our obsession with fresh juice seems like a trendy new craze, but in truth, it has been around on a mass scale since the founding of Tropicana, just after World War II. Nonetheless, it's still an industry where a maverick entrepreneur, with the help of a noisy, often provocative brand, can always grab some market share. Welcome. You're gonna love me, you're gonna love me, you're gonna love me. The branding is kind of in your face, loud, bold colors, much like its founder. You're gonna love me, you're gonna Marcus and Tevi believes that Juice Press is more than fresh juices and snacks. They are selling a healthy lifestyle. Cash rules everything around me. Dollar, dollar, big dollar. So how did he arrive at this moment? And where is Juice Press heading next? You're gonna love me, you're gonna love me. Here with Marcus and Tebby, founder and technical title? My technical title for the last few years has just been founder. First place I'd like to start, is there a foundational story that if someone didn't know you, that would help them understand you? Most about me is that I've always been a severe adventurer with very little fear of life, death, and injury. And um, that changed in the last few years, um, having kids. But growing up in my early 20s, I found that uh, rock climbing wasn't extreme enough. so. I graduated to skydiving and I stayed in that industry for 13 years and um, I used to fight competitive Thai boxing and my approach I think was mostly out of naivety that I just didn't really understand the idea that these things were dangerous uh, for life and limb and I think that that personality, that risk taker personality, it plays a value for me in being an entrepreneur in business because I am not afraid to take risks to turn a dream into something that's in reality. But tell me about your family life. Well, I was born in Brooklyn, and at age uh, nine, my father followed an opportunity in California, and he moved us to California. My mother and him got divorced. She moved back to New York, and I stayed with my dad. So from ages around nine to 19, I lived in Beverly Hills, went to Beverly Hills schools, and I came back when I was 19. And so I tried a few different uh, non-retail enterprises in my early 20s that flopped, and I found that because retail was in my blood, I stayed with it. Talk to me about your, your formal education, maybe something that you took out of it or didn't take out of it. Well, I'm a high school dropout, which is a mistake. I was a very late bloomer and I was an underachiever because I was very distracted and there really wasn't a school system for a creative and talented person with behavioral problems. Um, we want to turn left. Oh, I gotta, I gotta do one. Oh, who does he? Uh, He's letting you go. <laughs> of course. You gotta pass. <laughs> to really consider yourself a business person, what's missing in education today is how to be a good human being. Yeah. And how to bring a business to the world that not only lines your pockets, but helps humanity. So talk to me about your career kind of leading up to that ultimate creation of, uh, of what became Juice Press. It began with the fact that I was a consumer of this particular product for many years and was dissatisfied with the businesses that sold the product. My dream was to have a retail business that paid me to sit on a bench, drink juice, and talk to exciting people. Yeah. So, I mean, who doesn't have that dream? So, I did a business plan on my own, which took all my brain cells and my power, <laughs> and a retail store became available on East First Street, and I wanted that store more than I wanted to be in business. I just thought it was the coolest location, and I thought it would be- East First and? East First between first and second. Got it. So I ran across the street when the landlord was putting up the for rent sign. I said, what are you getting for the rent? She said, 2,500. I said, I'll give you 3,000. I negotiated up, because I thought it was such a great space, I didn't want to lose it. And next thing I know, I have the keys for a store, and I said, oh my God, I'm in the food business now. Here we are on the loading dock side where the produce comes in. It's either immediately refrigerated or it's sent to reduction to be washed. We're going from oranges to kale. Let's soak it in there, drop it in there. It's like a car wash for vegetables and fruit. I started dumping money in Juice Press, building a concept, trying to copy what I saw going on in New York. I had to really make a big deal about the case, the refrigerator, the product, and 
the passion behind it. Yeah. I was there every day, whether you like my face or not, I was there to help you, help you find the product, help you understand the price point, help you with your diet. And that had a very good chemistry at that you know, point in 2010. At the very beginning of Juice Press, I was standing on top of these machines for many hours a day. And now we're going to press the kale. This puts nine million pounds of pressure on the kale. Really a beautiful process. Where's the business now? A lot of people were coming to me because they wanted to invest. That rhymes. That's it. To some degree. All right, so I was talking to two or three different types of investors, trying to figure out which one added the most value and had smart money, not just, here's a check, kid, we'll see you in a few months. So I met this gentleman, Kenny Dichter. He was a customer of Juice Press. The famous the Kenny Dichter. The famous Kenny Dichter from uh, Now Wheels Up. Yeah. Kenny bought into the company first, and our goal was within 12 months, we would go for a Series A. He brought Michael Carr to the table for that Series A, and Michael took a, a better position than just a Series A. He took out one of my original partners, and then slowly over time, he got more and more involved. So his wife, Erica Karsh, and his sister, Roxanne, is involved. It is kind of actually a family business. Amazing. But I would say that where the business is at today is we set up about 87 retail stores where there's a few different business models within that structure. Is there something that's particularly challenging you right now that you're wrestling with and, and not sure which way to, to pivot, or move on, or change directions or courses? What we have right now is a core product with the highest integrity, and we believe that no one has, ever, has been able to match that in terms of the actual product on the shelf, because a lot of people have tried this and they failed. So. There's a second tier of products that are more likely to fit in well with supermarkets and um, recreational products that can still be healthy, like juice press popcorn, it's chewing gum, hot sauce, maple syrup. It has a juice press certification on it. What does that certification mean? If you had to crystallize why juice press can be on a pack of gum, what is it saying about that pack of gum? That we're not putting something out on the market that would disrupt someone's endocrine system from keeping them healthy. That specifically means we're not going into the nasty processed food business. Woo! I'm very excited. It's a new product that we're just launching. I think it's literally its first day on the shelf is today. Uh, called Dirty Detox. It's a uh, lemonade type drink made with cayenne lemon, and we're putting a little bit of activated charcoal from coconuts in it. This is going to be great. This is going to fly off the shelf. Where do you see it one year, five years, tw 10 years from now? I truly believe that there is a marriage to be made, not that there's anything in the work, between juice press, which is the highest quality integrity food that's not processed, yeah. and a large corporation that's looking for perhaps ways out of the products that they ordinarily sold and they want to move into the health space. When you pair us together, we amplify wellness. And I don't think that we could do it on our own. I really believe there has to be a parent group that has the distribution and the know-how how to bring certain products to 25 million people. I really am excited about some of the relationships that we've been working with over the last few years with Equinox as a health club, with um, Whole Foods. We're now building some standalone stores in Whole Foods. Uh, we have this relationship with Adidas. These type of relationships are actually, uh, first of all, they're proving that it can be done. Yeah. And uh, we don't have to sacrifice any of our values. Are you very routinized? Um in either in the way you practice your health regimen and or physical regimen. When I wake up in the morning, instead of saying I'm a dumb guy and I'm a piece of shit, I actually tell myself I'm a brilliant, awake human being and I understand the nature of things. In order to keep myself with my feet on the ground, as I say, the next sentence is so is everyone else. I'm not that special. What makes me interesting is that I'm starting to wake up and remember that I'm actually at that my core. It's not an easy thing. I have bad days out of nowhere. Days I wake up that are supposed to be special and great, they're shit for some reason. I did everything wrong and I went to bed depressed. There's other days I wake up, I can't do anything wrong. I have great relationships with people. I'm meeting people. I'm excited about the future. I'm planning. 
I feel like I'm accomplishing. The foundation of that is my attitude and I must wake up with an attitude and tell myself everything is amazing and it's a, it's a routine I do whether I believe it or not and it does actually shape the future and it may be not an easy thing to do but at least it has to be attempted. Like fake it till you make it. Incredible. Well, thank you for your time. Thank it, you. It's been a blessing. You know how traditionally um, when you end a podcast you have to jump up and hug me. I'm going to. Okay. Well, on video. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we gotta stay. We gotta stay in the in the Are camera frame. That was great. great. No, thank I appreciate you. it. Today, people want goji berries, chia seeds, mango, broccoli, banana smoothie. Well, then there was cleanup. It's just a major pain. Perfect. And the more people told us it was impossible, the more we got excited. Now decides. Oh. Yes. I think we need a second shoot. <laughs> I think so. <laughs>